There is only one rule here. The strong survive. This is a world of pure freedom. There is no authority, no peace, no thought, only instinct and the morality that might makes right. It is a world as cruel as those who call it home. Their brutal struggles scar the land even as it carves them in its image. A vicious circle spiraling out of control. So be ready for anything because Jund feasts on the unprepared. This is the complete guide to modern Jund. Jund is a deck that utilizes tools of the colors black, red, and green. The shard of Jund is characterized by a harsh landscape and the brutality of those who inhabit its land. And that actually sums up the deck pretty well. The goal of any Jund deck is to systematically disassemble whatever it is your opponent is doing while applying lots of pressure on their life total. You do so via hand disruption, creature and permanent removal, as well as efficient threats. Because this deck has no infinite or I-win combo elements, Jund is considered to be a fair archetype. In fact, it usually is the poster child for the fair strategy. Ideally, you have a turn one hand disruption to take out your opponent's most bothersome card. You want to get rid of the sort of thing that you won't be able to answer if it hits the board. Turn two, play a Dark Confident to start drawing cards, or play a Tarmogoyf to start beating down. It's important to prioritize which creatures to play first based on which ones you want to survive. For example, if you think your opponent has a Lightning Bolt in hand, but you need to gain some life to stabilize, you might prioritize your Scavenging ooze over your Dark Confidant. Therefore, you should run out your Confidant first to test your opponent. The turns following the first few are spent juggling either playing a removal spell or a threat or both via Liliana of the Veil. In an ideal game, your opponent will spend resources trying to answer whatever you play turn two, which will allow you to play your Liliana of the Veil onto a stable board. Liliana has the power to take over a game all by herself. Keeping up pressure on your opponent's hand via her plus one one doesn't allow them to construct a plan of attack, and her negative two helps clean up any pesky creatures. If your three and four drops don't survive, you have the option of utilizing your raging ravines. The ravines are an effective use of your mana to apply pressure on your opponent, while still reserving the cards in your hand. Jund really starts to take over the game once you are able to play two spells a turn, until you have exhausted your opponent's resources. Now, Jund doesn't really have a theme other than just a pile of highly efficient cards that make your opponent's life difficult. Because of this, it has more flexible spots than most decks, and it can be finely tuned and configured for your meta. This characteristic sets it aside from most other fair decks and attributes to its overall success. And the sideboard follows that same highly flexible strategy, and so you should be sure to fine-tune your deck's sideboard to the matchups you intend to see. Jun doesn't specifically have any amazing turn one matchups in its favor, but it also doesn't have any turn one matchups that are a disaster for it. This is part of what makes it such a fair deck. Except for Tron. Tron is a bad matchup, okay? Jun players, not big fans of Tron. Let's take a closer look at this deck right now. Let's start with creatures. If this deck had a checklist of requirements for its creatures, it would be broken down into these three categories. Creatures that gain you life, creatures that draw you cards, and or creatures that get them dead. We're looking at a simple plan using cheap and efficient creatures. Let's begin with the full play set of Tarmogoyf. This is the beat stick that grows as you fill the graveyard with all of your opponent's precious things. If on turn one you crack a fetch and then use one of your seven hand disruption spells on your opponent, that means on turn two you'll drop a Tarmogoyf that can be a 3-4 or even a 4-5. Attacking with that turn three is not too bad. We also run a full play set of Dark Confidant, aka Bob, aka Robert, aka the 2-1 card drawing engine. Single-handedly, this card will bury your opponent in card advantage. Next, we have three scavenging ooze. Om nom 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 nom. With all the discard and removal in your deck, this guy, uh, girl, uh, 
ooze will be well fed and keep your life total at healthy levels while applying significant pressure. Ooze also helps disrupt random graveyard strategies. A few examples being Living End, Malira Fink's combo, all the while making Snapcaster Mage look silly, as you can eat their target before they are able to get full value. Kalitas is the newest addition to the team and plays an interesting and unique role. Along with being a life-linking 3-4, he has the very relevant text of, when an opponent's creature dies, exile it instead, and put a 2-2 zombie token onto the field. This ability turns all your removal into bodies on the field, and it negates any opposing creature death effects. What about instants, sorceries, and planeswalkers? Modern is a very diverse format, and to combat that, your disruption must be both complex and flexible. One of the most efficient and flexible forms of disruption is hand disruption. So we run a play set of, not Thoughtseize, but Inquisition of Kozilek? No one expects a full playset of the Inquisition of Kozilek, but maybe you should, because in modern, most cards are going to have a converted mana cost of three or less, meaning that Inquisition is a super high value card, especially as far as hand disruption is concerned. At the low, low cost of only one black mana, Inquisition of Kozilek gives you a look into your opponent's hand while taking away a possible early game play. We do run a pair of Thoughtseize along those same lines. Again, here we have cheap and effective hand disruption, except with Thoughtseize we are able to take any non-land card from our opponents. However, we will lose two life in order to do so. But we're in Jund, so who cares? Because Inquisition should be able to clean out most cards our opponents could have, we only run run the two Thoughtseize. Some of the high priority targets that we can grab with Thoughtseize but not Inquisition include Scapeshift, Cryptic Command, Nahiri, and any of Tron's payoff cards. We also would want to get rid of Bring to Light and Kalitas if we see them. Removal doesn't get much more clean cut than four lightning bolts. Do you think three damage to creature or opponent for only one red mana is good? Wrong. Lightning Bolt is not a good card. It's an amazing card. If it is legal in your format, you should be playing red just to play Lightning Bolt. Two Abrupt Decay are our essential catch-all, cannot-be-countered, non-land removal. If it's a permanent that costs three or less and it's problematic, Abrupt Decay is the answer. Terminate is great for targeting our opponent's man lands, such as Ink Moth Nexus, Celestial Colonnade, and Raging Ravine. In Jund, Culgan's Command feels like your own mini cryptic command. It shines the most in the grindy matchups where every mode can serve an essential role. The most common role of this card, however, is to get back a late game Tarmogoyf while simultaneously killing one of your opponent's creatures or making them discard a card. And of course, we have a full playset of the most powerful planeswalker in all modern, Liliana of the Veil. Unopposed on an empty board, Liliana will simply shut most decks out of the game entirely by stripping them of their hand and making them sacrifice their precious creatures. Resolving a Liliana will almost always result in a two-for-one at the very least. Any mid-range or control deck will have issues dealing with Liliana. We also want to include a pail of Maelstrom Pulse, another great catch-all that will destroy any non-land permanent. While three mana feels a bit costly and that sorcery speed restriction can be painful, this card is still very good and has a list of targets that only it can deal with. Its best function is against Tron as it will blow up any of their payoff cards. So what does Jun's mana base look like? The key cards of the mana base are the Raging Ravine Manlands and the Black Cleave Cliffs. The ravines act as a late game mana sink that allow you to effectively use your turn to get aggressive while not using any of the cards you have in hand. Aside from Terminate, Lightning Bolt, and Path to Exile, Raging Ravine is very difficult for your opponent to deal with once you start attacking with it. Black Cleave Cliffs offer both early and untapped red-black sources, which happen to be the most important color sources for this deck, you commonly want to have the ability to cast a turn one hand disruption or leave open a lightning bolt. The downside to Jun's mana base is that you are highly susceptible to Blood Moon, and it is very important to respect the possibility that your opponent probably will side in this card against you if they can. You should expect it. And for this reason, you should always run two basic swamps and two basic forests. What's in our sideboard? Much like the 
the landscape of Alara after the Conflux. Modern's landscape is constantly changing, and therefore, so too are its sideboards. All of your sideboard cards need to have a high level of functionality against multiple decks. Narrow sideboard cards can be absolutely devastating for an opponent, but they can also feel really bad if you only see that matchup once over the course of, say, a 10-round tournament. Right now, I would recommend you run one additional Culligan's Command. This is very flexible with its four modes and makes for a great sideboard option. Bring this in if you're facing Affinity or if you're just up against Control or other mid-rangey decks. One Thrun, the last troll. This card has been in and out of Jun's sideboard since it was printed, but with the rise of Jeskai's popularity yet again, we see Thrun making a comeback to troll opponents. Get it? Troll op- okay. We also want to play an Engineered Explosives. This again is just another catch-all removal spell that can occasionally hit more than one pesky non-land permanent. Having the ability to set it to three is great and just adds to the card's flexibility. Engineered Explosives is quickly becoming one of the best sideboard options for most three-color decks, and setting Explosives to one or two can really cripple decks like Merfolk, Affinity, Bogles, Zoo, and Infect. While a pair of Ancient Grudge is probably one of the more narrow cards in the sideboard, they still can serve a purpose against several decks. Having Flashback is what pushes this card over the top, making it one of your best options against decks such as Affinity and Lantern Control. We also run two Anger of the Gods. Now, this slot used to be filled by the card Pyroclasm. However, the exiling effect of Anger makes it worth the steep red, red one cost. It is a great tool against any deck that's hoping to cast Collected Company, such as Malira Combo, and also just decks like Infect and Elves. A pair of Obstinate Bailoth is great against any opposing Lilianas, because if your opponent makes you discard a Bailoth, it says nope and comes into play for free. These beasties will gain you life as well and block most attackers quite easily. And they don't just die to a Lightning Bolt or a Helix. Good against Jund for the mirror matches, as well as Jeskai, Aggro, and Burn decks. Similar to the role of the Obstinate Bailoth, Finks are difficult to remove due to Persist, and they gain a small amount of life while either attacking or blocking. Most aggro decks will have to two-for-one themselves to get around to Finks. Good against that Jeskai Control, Jund Mirror Matches, Aggro, and Burn. Two Fulminator Mages are here to help us against the only deck that really preys on Jund. That's because Fulminator Mage is great against Tron, as well as any other matchups where your opponent will be using lands for anything other than adding mana to the pool. Being able to loop your mages by recurring them with Culligan's Command is also a nice trick, and that also will sometimes result in just locking out your opponent by mana screwing them off a of color. Good against three color grindy decks, like Jund and Abzan, and anything that uses man lands, and of course Tron for that nightmare matchup. We also want to look at one Knight of Souls Betrayal, as it will not allow certain decks to keep any creatures on board. Knight is good against Infect, Bogles, Affinity, and decks hoping to stabilize by casting Lingering Souls. And one Nihil Spellbomb, because it's good to have a little extra hate for any deck that utilizes the graveyard. Spellbomb is still good even if you have to use this card just to cycle itself. But remember, one of the biggest advantages is just how flexible Jun's sideboard is. The cards that I've just gone over are highly recommended for the current modern meta, but that meta is constantly changing, so be aware of the decks that you're going to go up against. Presented here, quickly, are some notable mentions that you might consider now or in the future for your Jund sideboard. Shatterstorm, Crossan Grip, Golgari Charm, Huntmaster of the Fells, Jund Charm, Damnation, Olivia Voldaren, Graft Digger Cage, Pithing Needle, Thrag Tusk, Choke, Feed the Clans, Thought Seas, Duress, Crumble to Dust, Painful Truths, Grim Lava Mancer. I hope very much this advanced deck tech has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. Do you want to see more advanced deck techs such as this one? Let me know in the comments below what deck in what format you would like to see. And this video, like all of my videos, is made possible by a generous support of our patron alums over at Patreon. Even donations as low as $1 a month keep this channel going and growing strong. So thank you for your support of Talarian Community College.